So this is my website. And as I scroll down, it behaves like any other website. Smooth and simple. But here's the fun part. When I reach this section and scroll down, the page switches to a horizontal scroll, allowing me to explore different travel destinations. And as I reach the end of the section, it transitions back to vertical scrolling. It's a really cool way to highlight specific content on your site and keep visitors engaged. In this example, we've got multiple amazing travel destinations, each represented by a video showcasing beautiful locations from around the world. You can easily use this layout to display images, text or even buttons, whatever suits your website. The best part is that you don't need any paid plugins. We are going to do this all with Elementor's free version and just a bit of custom GSAP code. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a slick interactive scroll that alternates between horizontal and vertical sections, a cool way to highlight your content and keep visitors engaged. And don't worry if you've never done this before. I'll walk you through each step and I'll be right here to guide you. So open up Elementor and let's get started. All right, so I've got this page ready with the hero section and the final section. Now I want to add the different sections that will be our horizontal scrolling sides as I showed you earlier. To do that, we first need to add a container between these sections, which will hold all the different slides. So click the plus icon and add a container here. We want to use the vertical container because we are going to stack sections and make sure the width is set to full width and the height to 100 VH. So it fills the whole screen. Next, set the wrap to no wrap and set the overflow to hidden. This will keep everything neat and tidy. Once that's done, let's go to the advanced tab, set the padding to zero and give this container a CSS class called wrapper. It will help us link it to the code later. Now I'll add another container here and change the name of the container in the navigator to slide. Also, set it to full width, height to 100 VH, and remove the gaps. This is our first slide, and we need to make a few more changes to this. So let's go to advanced, and unlink the margins, and padding like this. I'll also add a little space inside with some padding. Set it to 50 pixel on the right and bottom, and 100 pixel on the left and right. Finally, set it to grow by clicking here and give it a CSS class called slide. All right, so this is the area we'll be using to create a bento grid design here. This helps us showcase the different travel locations. So let's make that first. I'll add a container and set its width to 30% and height to 70 VH. This makes it nice and tall. Now align the content to the end and also add a background image from here. I'll set the position to center center and the display size to cover. Then scroll down to border and set the border radius to 30 pixels. Finally, let's add a heading widget here and change the text to New Zealand. Now change the text color to white and the font to Poppins. Then set the size to 30, weight to semi bold, and add some text shadow by clicking here to give it some depth. Once that's done, go to advanced settings and set the padding to this. Now, below the first heading, add a second heading, style it the same way, but give it a top margin of minus 20 pixels and padding of 15 pixel on the left and bottom like this. So our first bento grid is done. And similarly, I'll use the exact same steps to create multiple grids for this slide. Once done, it should look like this. Now let's create the second slide, which will hold the video showcase and the travel packages. But before that, whenever I'm doing some design work for clients, I make sure to install this free plugin Airlift because, okay, let me actually show you this. So that's my side speed before. And that's after. It does a lot of optimizations automatically and keeps stuff fast. So you should definitely try this and I'll leave the link in the description below. So I'll add a container here and change the name to slide in the navigator. Just make sure it's below the first slide container we created earlier. Now change it to full width and set the height to 100 VH so it covers the entire screen. 
I'll also set the direction to vertical and then justify the content to space between. Let's add the video background now. To do that, just go to the style tab and click on this video icon. Now add the video link here. And as you can see, the video starts playing. Just go to advanced and link the padding and set the padding to this so that the video background covers the entire screen. Finally, I'll change the size to grow and add the CSS class slide. All right, that's all done. Let's start styling the section with the heading and the travel packages. So I'll add a heading widget here and change the text to New Zealand. Let's also style it a bit and it should look something like this. Okay, let's create the different travel packages. I'll add another container here, change the direction to row as we want to add multiple packages side by side and unlink the padding from the advanced tab. Now set the padding to this and add another container inside this. Go to the style tab, change the background to black and then decrease the opacity to make it more transparent. Now go to border and give it a border radius of 20 pixels. Now that's done. Go to advanced, set the padding to 15 pixel and add an icon box widget like this. I'll change the icon to this, make it stacked and change the shape to circle. Now change the title and description to this and go to the style tab, change the icon position to be left aligned and spacing to this. All right, let's change the colors now. So click here and change the icon color like this. I'll also change the size from here and then text color from here. I'll add another text widget and use it for pricing. Once that's done, it should look like this. Now let's add a button to explore our packages. So click here and add a button from here. I'll just change the button text to explore now. Set the position to the right and change the color to white. Finally, add a border radius of five pixel and change the padding to this. Let's quickly duplicate this container two more times and just make some changes to the content. Once done, the slide should look like this. Now, to create all the different slides, I'll duplicate this video slide a few more times and change the video and the headings. You can change it to anything you want. And after you're done, you should have multiple slides like these. Just make sure to check the CSS class, which should be set to slide. Okay, our design is ready. All we need to do is add an HTML widget and add the code. So let's go to the end and add a container here. I'll add the HTML widget here and paste the GSAP code that you can find in the description below. Now go back to wrapper container, select it and set the direction to row like this and set the gaps to zero. Let's publish and preview the page now. As you can see, we can scroll vertically to this section and then as you scroll down, the page starts scrolling horizontally. Once you go back up, the horizontal works in reverse and you can start scrolling vertically again. Oh, and you might see this scroller marker here. You can remove this by editing a single line in the code. So just go back to the GSAP code and look for this line where it says markers colon true. Just change the true to false and update the page. As you can see, the marker is no longer visible and the vertical and horizontal scrolling works perfectly. Comment below if you have any questions and I'll help you out. Click this video if you want to triple your size speed in just one minute. You're really gonna thank me for this. So click here and I'll see you there.